Welcome to the J-Boy Show, hosted by Jake Crane, the fastest growing sports show in the nation. I'm Coach Hugh Freeze. This is Super Bowl champion Brandon Graham. Hey, this is DJ Shockley, and you're watching. And you're watching. And thanks for watching the J-Boy Show. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us again on another edition of the J-Boy Show. We're going to keep spitting out the best information you can get when it comes to SEC sports, NFL, any, anything under the sun. I know we focus on the SEC and we kind of expand, but really excited to talk some Tennessee spring ball. Just had their spring game. I want to get that in one second, but I do got a shout out betonline.ag. Head over there today. The online casino is always open. We've got Major League Baseball, NASCAR, football. You know the drill. Anything that's being played, they're going to have a spread on it. The sign-up bonuses are great. They're going to play the sharp. So whether it's parlays, props, however you get down, head over to betonline.ag today and tell them that Jay boy sent you a uh, very excited to bring in a guy we've had on before. Now that spring is concluded uh, before we started spring kind of brought him on to talk about some sec West going to focus on Tennessee, uh, how their spring went under new head coach, Josh Heupel. And that's Rocky top insiders, Trey Wallace, T dub. What's up? What's up brother. It's good to, uh, it's good to be on with you, man. Definitely man. Good to be on with you. I, I noticed the nice fancy background you got behind there doing it big or over there at RTI. And, yeah. and uh, again, excited to see that the content you're putting out is fantastic Trey as usual, but uh, I, I want to jump right in here. Uh, you know, we've talked about Tennessee. Obviously I bring you on here. We talk a lot of Tennessee, talk some East now that spring has finished. And just to give some background, I, I know our Tennessee audience will know what happened, but uh, there was a lot of offense in the spring game. Uh, the orange ended up winning 42 to 37 uh, for you mathematicians out there, that's 79 combined points. Uh, you look at uh, Harrison Bailey, uh, had a good day, 12 of 16, 260 and two tugs. Uh, Moore had a good day as well. And transfer, Hendon Hooker had a good day. Now, again, there's always a, a, a yang to the yin uh, that the defense gave up that many points. But just before we get into the offensive and defensive side, Trey, uh, what did you take? What are some storylines coming out of that game uh, that you didn't know going into it, or at least maybe weren't as informed on until you saw it on the field? I think when you look at what Tennessee was trying to put on the field, look, man, they were, they were struggling all spring when it comes to numbers at, at the linebacker spot, defensive line position, you know, and they'll get a few guys back from injury. I, I didn't realize, and we did, but I didn't realize that we got to game time, just how thin they were at the defensive line in a sense of playmakers. They have bodies. Like that's what, to, you know, Tennessee probably has, I would say, seven to eight bodies on the defensive line that, that you can look at and think, okay, these guys are, you know, they're sustainable. They're guys that are going to get you in first and second down. The ten Tennessee's problem is they don't have a monster. Yeah. When you look around the, the conference, you know, teams have that guy on third down you know you can rely on. Uh, you know, you look at LSU, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, you know, there's always somebody on that defensive line that that you feel, OK, this is the guy. Tennessee's still looking for that person. Um, you know, I, I think that Byron Young, um, you know, a, a Juco product coming here, 23 years old. Great backstory to him. He really flourished this spring. Um, he's somebody Tennessee's going to be able to rely on, I think, come the fall. But right now you you look at it and, and it's like, OK, what about Darrell Middleton? What about Aubrey Solomon? Are they even with the team? You know, come fall season. And you have guys like Matthew Butler and Elijah Simmons and Latrell Bumpus. Um, so, you know, th that's my one takeaway. Like I knew linebacker was going to be a problem. Um, I, I think they might have that position kind of filled up with a transfer. We'll see uh, in the next week. But right now, when you look at it, man, of all the places on Tennessee's team where they're struggling right now, I would say it's that defensive line linebacker spot. And, and I just you don't realize how bad it is until you kind of see it in person. Yeah, and, and you're right. It's a numbers game. And, and I always say it's not about your first, you know, 22. It's about your first 44, really what it comes down to. And, you know, Trey, uh, one of those things when you have a, a dominating player at any level of the defense, but especially the defensive line, now the offense has to make adjustments to stop that person, which typically frees up other guys. You get a lot more one-on-ones. A great example of that was having Derek Brown on the inside on Auburn's defensive line, and it made Big Cat Bryant, you know, look like he was a first-round pick at defensive right. end, helped Marlon Davidson out as well, uh, who, who played in but was more of an interior player in my, in my mind. But I agree with you 100%, and that's what it's going to come down to in this league is up front. Offensive line, your front seven on defense. And listen, there's nothing really that Josh Heupel can do about the roster that he inherited. You're going to 
have turnover when you get a new coach. Uh, there were some things, and me and you talked about it, some situations I thought they could have handled better. But uh, when you're looking at this defensive line, Trey, uh, and, you, and you bring up the transfers in the front seven in general, there's some names out there. Uh, in the portal that Tennessee is really active, actively pursuing that you feel good about? Because you do have to get numbers at the end of the day. And how do you get the most experienced guy? Well, you get a guy with some experience. Well, I, I think along the defensive line, Tennessee's going after anybody and everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. if you put your name in, uh, uh, there was a uh, USC, Caleb Tremblay, he put his name in uh, three days ago. You know, does Tennessee make a run there? Because they have a couple USC ties on their roster already with, with McGrath at kicker. Mm, um, you have Raylis Jones Jr. Uh, from Mobile. Uh, you've also got Trey Johnson, who moved over from the recruiting department at USC and now works at Tennessee. So, you know, we'll see at that type of player. I, I think Tennessee is making a really, really hard push uh, at Jawan Mitchell, the leading <laughs> uh, tackler from Texas. Yeah, last I coached year. him in junior uh, college, actually. Juju. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was, he was actually uh, on campus this weekend. And he yeah, hung he's out a with. Great guy. Yeah, he hung out with Joe Milton, uh, new Tennessee quarterback, uh, at, at the spring game, and um, they didn't know if he was going to come in. And then all of a sudden, Saturday, uh, he had texted some coaches, "Hey, I'm, I'm coming in town." Um, so, you know, I, I think that's somebody they're in a good spot with. Uh, I would, I would think a decision would be made sometime in the next week there. Um, and, and if you get that spot, then okay, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of okay because you've got Jeremy Banks coming back. You've got Roman Harrison uh, that will be coming back. If they need to slide him into that spot, they can. They have players like Morvin Joseph. You know, ten Tennessee was running with, with two former walk-ons yeah. at linebacker who are now on scholarship. But what I'm getting at is that Tennessee is going after everybody they can, and, and they're trying to get involved. Um, and, and I think that's all they can do. They've got a couple mm -hmm. spots they can use uh, for this upcoming season. And, and the biggest part of that is – how do they space it out? Because they've already got their quarterback. Okay, now you got to get somebody on the defensive line. Now you got to get somebody at the linebacker position. And if you can do that, I think you kind of shore up that defense in a sense because I think the secondary is the strong point for Tennessee's uh, defense this upcoming season. I agree. And, and before we get to the offensive side, you know, I want to stay on the defensive side, looking at the back end. Uh, obviously, the way that offenses have evolved, uh, especially in the SEC, uh, a lot of points are being scored. A lot of passes are being thrown. Even I think Kentucky's even going to throw a couple passes this year, believe it or not. Uh, so you think that's the strong part of the defense. Who are one or two guys that you think stands out in that secondary? Because they need somebody uh, that can stop the vertical passing game because you're going to get it uh, if you're not too good in that front seven because play action's coming. I mean, I could easily say, you know, Elante Taylor. You know, but but we got we have to go outside that that one spot. I, I think when you look at players like Warren Burrell, uh, you look at somebody like Danico Slaughter, uh, who who started last season and then kind of went away with this coaching staff, um, the the previous coaching staff. Um, you know, like a, Trayvon Flowers in the secondary, and you've still got you know a guy like Tank McCullough, Jalen McCullough in the back end that I think can help out. Uh, at, at that spot, Kenneth George Jr. Uh, is is another type of player that's going to be able to help out uh, on those outside edges right there at the corner spot. So Tennessee has depth. I mean, even Christian Charles, a uh, young player freshman that's coming in right now that I think can do wonders at Tennessee. You got to give him a little time here, uh, but I think he could be a really good defensive back for you. And, and so that's where Tennessee's depth lies this year is in the secondary. And if they can just figure out how they want to run that star position with Theo Jackson and, and the nickel coverage, you know, then then things will play OK for them. Um, so right now, those are the kind of ones you, you got to have Alante Tender lead you this year. Can't have a season like he had last year. Yeah. You know, I, I get it. It was tough. Him and Bryce Thompson were out there, you know, on the island alone. And, and, and Bryce Thompson decided to move on, I think, a little bit earlier. Uh, than I would, but there was more to that story than than just moving on to the NFL. So when you, when you when you look at you know what's going on with with Tennessee right now, secondary strong point, they do have I would say six or seven players that I think they're going to be able to rely yeah. on. No, I, I agree. And, and again, you never really want to have the strength be in the back, and you always want it in the front, but it's got to lie somewhere. And and Trey. Right. Uh, we have a new staff, obviously, with Josh Heupel being the new head coach, brought in his staff schematically on defense. Uh, did anything surprise you? You know, it, did you get some three down or was it mostly four down or are they trying to kind of uh, and you really can't blitz in the spring game. But but did you see anything schematically that surprised you? It feels like they're going to run that four two five. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's just kind of what it feels like right now. I think Tennessee 
that would be set at that two linebacker spot. You know, the problem last year for Tennessee is, you know, you had Henry Toa Toa there at the linebacker position, but he was having, you know, every play he was having to get either Crouch or Jeremy Banks lined up and it took his focus away from what's going on right in front of him at the quarterback position. So, and what the offense, the opposing offense was trying to do. So, you know, when you, when you look at it schematically, I, I don't think the, the full defense is set in stone yet. I, I know that it's somewhat the same, you know, at, at every different spot, but you got different play calls and, you know, the, the you know, the blitz might be called something different. Rodney Garner talked about that a lot, who you're very familiar with. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we when you look at what Tim Banks is trying to do and Brian Jean Mary at that linebacker spot, you know, I, I think they're trying to get it set in stone of how they want to run it. They want to run with that two linebacker set. They have to be prepared to be sustainable off the edges. Guys like mm -hmm. Bryson Easton off the edge, Tyler Barron coming off the edge because, they, you know, if, if you're not formidable, right there in the trenches, you know, that's going to be the problem for Tennessee. So it's getting the pressure. So I think you're going to see a lot of different looks from Tennessee, but I would say for most of the time, you're going to see that two linebacker look, and then maybe they slip somebody in coming off the edge, maybe play Tyler Barron a little bit off um, and have him coming off the side. So something to keep an eye on, on what Tim Bakes is going to try to do, but I do think it's going to be a multiple front for Tennessee. Yeah, and it, I expect to see him mix it up and give some different looks to that offensive line, take a little pressure off. Because, again, you know, it's different when you're at Alabama and you have guys that can sit there and two-gap the whole time. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're in. Sometimes you got to get a little right. creative. And, uh, Trey, we talked about transfers on the defensive side and, and going to get, you know, and, and I'm not even talking about junior college guys or guys from other colleges. Or there's some freshmen coming in this summer, maybe one or two. I know Dylan Brooks is obviously now at Auburn. But are there some young guys you think could help out immediately? on this defense in the front seven? Because we know the back end's pretty pretty set. Well, you know, they, they lost Katron Evans, um, who was who was going to be uh, enrolling at Tennessee. That that was a whole big story. Um, but, but I think that when you look at what Tennessee has when it comes to just freaks on the, on the line of scrimmage, I still go back to players that have kind of been around the system. You know, a, a Bryson Eason type of player uh, that has at least been around for a year. Uh, Byron Young, I know he's Juco, but he's coming in. You look at Aaron Willis. Aaron Willis was a linebacker, a four-star linebacker who came into Tennessee, but then got suspended and has missed all of spring practice. Now, I expect him to be back with the football team uh, uh, come summer workouts, June 1st, around that time. He is the type of player, too, that could help Tennessee and what they're trying to do and attack the quarterback and get you know to the back of the line of the scrimmage and be able to stop that running game because that's going to be a problem for Tennessee. How do they shore up the middle of the field? Uh, so when you look at a player like Aaron Willis, can he learn enough over the next four months to be a factor for fall camp? I think that's something to keep an eye out on. And we have to wait for him to get fully brought back into the Tennessee program. But but Taurus is telling me that, you know, that they think he'll be back by June 1st. So that's somebody to keep an eye on on just because the the you know the other you know, two guys like, like a player like, you know, Isaac Washington. I, I don't know if he's going to return or what's Martavius French do, you know, when it comes to the, the, the old Memphis trio that came in. So, you know, Tennessee has a couple of guys that can come in and, and be able to fill it, but they did good in a sense of getting some experienced guys, even if that is at the Juco level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's going to be really interesting to to see how it plays out, because we all know how crazy the portal is. But speaking about experience, if you're not having a great fishing experience, you can't catch any fish, uh, don't know what to use where, but just enjoy fishing and want to have more success, you need to go to monsterbass.com right now. Use the promo code JBOY10. That's J B O Y 10. You get 15% off your first order. They're a subscription uh, fishing service. So this is how it works. Wherever you're at, does not matter. They're going to know. They tell them where you fish, pond, lake, whatever, freshwater, saltwater. They're going to have the bait, the tackle, the jigs, the lures that you need, and they'll send them right to your house for a great price. That's monsterbass.com. Use the promo code. It's, 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 it's a promo code. It's a coupon. Uh, you get to save some money because it's great stuff. Uh, that's jboy10, jboy10 at monsterbass.com. Check them out. Uh, we're here with Rocky Top Insiders Trey Wallace talking some Tennessee now that the first spring – uh, from the Josh Heupel regime is done. And we talked enough defense, Trey. The, the day was won by the offense. Uh, you look at the quarterbacks, already ripped off some of the numbers. 
Let's start with the quarterbacks. That's, that's obviously a huge part. Had a ton of success. Uh, new offense, new system, you know, high flying, going fast, got to get the ball out. What did you think about Harrison Bailey? And, and again, the defense is what it is, but his decision making uh, and his ability to spread the ball around. I, I thought Harrison Bailey had himself a nice spring game. Um, I think, you know, talking with folks, it, it was kind of a different story when it comes to the other two scrimmages that they had that were closed to the public and to the media. Um, but, but I thought that he looked poised in the pocket. Um, he felt he looked comfortable throwing the ball down the field. Uh, he had a couple bombs and that, you know, and that was kind of due to Tennessee running a vanilla defense, but I, I, I still look at Harrison Bailey as a quarterback that if he can learn this system and, and if he can be able to get these guys going within eight seconds, eight seconds of when the last plays up, then maybe he can do something here at Tennessee. Does this scheme fit him to the T? No, but Josh Heupel did talk about how, look, if we think a quarterback is going to be able to lead our team. And if we think there's one guy out there, we will fit the offense around him. Mm -hmm. So you look at Harrison Bailey and, you, and, and, and he comes in and, you know, he's a gamer. You look what he did kind of last season, a little bit toward, against Florida, you know, against Vanderbilt, teams like that. And then you, you factor in this spring where he had off days and he had on days. You know, there, there were days in practice when I was out there watching, you know, he was throwing ducks. And then the next day, you know, he'd come back and he's on target. So, you know, you don't want to be hit and miss when it comes to Harrison Bailey. But I think Saturday he went out there and he did what he was supposed to do. And, and that was get the offensive line, get them set, get the wide receiver set, relay that play call, and then be able to try to make plays down the field. And I think Saturday kind of showed that Harrison Bailey might be in this dogfight. You know, yeah. it's going to be interesting because of all the quarterbacks that are now on the roster. But, you know, if there was a thought going into summer, it might have been, does Harrison Bailey potentially look around because maybe the system doesn't fit? I think now coming out of spring, it's more or less, okay, this guy is going to fight for this starting job and we'll see if he can make anything from it. Yeah, and it's got to give him some confidence. And you look at the two other quarterbacks, Brian Moore, who's been there for 30 years, I swear. I, you know, I swear he's been there for 30 been years. Tough as nails. Tough as nails. That kid's yep. taking some hits, hits, and he's not huge either. Uh, then you got transfer Hendon Hooker, who I found very interesting. Grading the other two quarterbacks, how did you feel compared uh, to Harrison Bailey? And do you think there's an edge or a lead uh, for any of the guys that you saw Saturday coming off that performance? Oh, Brian Maurer. Let's we'll start with Brian Maurer. Brian, yeah, Brian Maurer has been around for a minute. Is that, I can't believe it's uh, it's been like three years, I think it is now. Um, but, you know, it's been so off and on. Brian Maurer had a um, had an interesting spring. Uh, he, he was hot and he was cold. Um, you know, one day he's throwing a back of the end zone touchdown to Ramel Keaton. Uh, the next play, he is throwing an interception. And I think that's what ends up hurting Brian Maurer in the long run is the inconsistency. Um, it, it's not the skill set. He's got it. The kid can get outside the pocket. He can throw the ball 60 yards down the field. Um, I, I think he can pick up this offense. It's just the inconsistency that has the coaching staff worry because, you know, you, you can't go out here and you're, you're literally throwing a 20-yard dart this play. The next play you're coming out, you know, and you're throwing a five yard out that turns into an interception. That's the problem that they're kind of running into right now with Brian Maurer. Um, when you look at Hendon Hooker, Hendon Hooker, you know, I think he was hurt by the, the game on Saturday that it was no contact. He knew that the defensive line was technically not going to come after him and try to hit him. Hendon Hooker is better when it's live and that's understandable because Some guys can, are like that Some guys right like yeah that. because he can scramble he can get outside he can make throws on the run he did have a you know a scramble for a, i think it was a, a 15 yard scramble for a touchdown but then he you know he did throw that interception for a touchdown to warren burrell you know through that pick six i think hendon hooker is the type of quarterback that josh heupel it, it would like to see under center and like to see running this type of offense um, and, and from what I've been told, he had a really good spring. This is the guy that, that came in and, you know, he picked it up pretty quick, I would say. And they haven't got full into the offensive playbook yet. From what they are now, I think Hendon Hooker had a really good spring. And, and I think on Saturday, you know, you didn't see a lot of attempts from Hendon Hooker. But in my opinion, in talking with folks, that was by design. Because I think they already know what they have with Hendon Hooker. 
they wanted to see, okay, how does Harrison Bailey and Brian Maurer kind of step up? So in, in my opinion, Hooker is going to be right there as 1A, 1B, fighting for the starting job come fall camp. Yeah, and he's a guy that, that came over expecting to have a shot, and it's going to be interesting to kind of follow this through. And, and you're right, you know, spring, while, while you're putting in all the base stuff, it's a new scheme, you're getting used to it, it's a new regime, how they put it in, there's a lot of moving parts. And uh, one, one spot, where we, we know what Tennessee has, a, a few guys at wide receiver, you look at running back as well. Uh, Vela Jones, obviously a guy that, that we're very familiar with uh, from Data Mobile, Sarah Land, I believe, unless, unless yep. I'm mistaken, uh, went out to USC, now is back at Tennessee. Uh, had a good game uh, in the spring game Saturday, and again, he's got nothing to prove. Everybody kind of knows what he can do, but yeah, you look at – yeah. yeah, you look at freshman wide receiver Jack Jancic. Uh, and Jancic, uh, make sure you, you correct me on the on the pronunciation Jancic, of that. Yeah, it. Jancic. Uh, he's a guy. Did that surprise you, him having the game that he did, you know, especially being a young guy? Uh, or was just was he the guy, was he a guy that were really focused on trying to get the ball to see if he can do some things, or did it just happen that way? It just happened. It really I mean, it really did. It, it's not this is not a knock on Jancic, but Jancic would probably be at the three deep yeah. spot on, yeah. on Tennessee's yeah. rotation. Um, there were a couple busted coverages and Jancic took, look, those are beautiful catches right over the shoulder catches down the sideline. Um, they were, they were nice. And, uh, I liked the hookup that he had with, you know, with Bailey and then Maurer through the other one, I, you know, everybody, you know, everybody wants to now compare him. Okay. Can he run that slot can he <laughs> that guy like Edelman or something like that? You know, it, it was unexpected. But man, that's that's great for his confidence, man. Yeah. Going in this, you know, the summer workouts and can he do something maybe to get on the field? I, I don't know. But I, I think that at least it was good for him to to kind of feel some of that because I do think Tennessee is pretty solid at the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. And that, that's going to be the key thing for them. You know, it, it's it's the Jalen Hyatts, you know, Cedric Tillman, like we talked about with Valus. Um, I think you look at the two Jimmys, Jimmy Calloway, Jimmy Holiday. Those are the type of players that are going to help Tennessee this year. We'll see what happens with Malachi Weidman. He has not really been around much the last three weeks. Uh, they say it's due to, you know, a little bit of an injury. So we'll see how that continues to play out, you know, in, in the long run with Tennessee's wide receiver group. But I will say they are experienced Mm -hmm. They have talent and they're fast. And that's what you need out of this group, especially when you've got tight ends that I think are coming into form as well. Yeah. And, and when you look offensively, kind of how it went. And, and again, you're not, you're not going to get the whole menu in spring. You're going to get a lot of base stuff, especially when you're evaluating. But what did you think about the Hypel offense? How, to, how did the offensive line adjust? Uh, did they look pretty comfortable in the protections? And just overall, uh, what did you think about the scheme and then the offensive line play? Man, I thought the offense is fast. Look, and, and I've watched. Here's the thing: I've I've watched, you know, UCF football. Yeah, we know uh, what we're getting. Right, we we know what we're getting. When you when you see it in person, yeah, okay, you know, it, it's a tad bit different, but you understand what you're getting. Um, and it wasn't as fast on Saturday that it's going to be in the fall. Um, but but I thought the scheme, you know, that they laid out, and like again, it was very vanilla. But when it comes to protection on, on the offensive line, I thought they did a good job you know, getting up and getting to the next play. That's going to be the key thing for Tennessee. You know, Tennessee has a, a couple of guys that, you know, about 320, something like that. And you're going to have to work those guys into the shape that you need to run this type of offense because it's so go, go, go. You know, you can't be rotating in offensive linemen. You got to have your five set. So I, I look at what Josh Heupel has installed with this offense so far. And, and I think it's something that could work. I, you know, we talked about it before spring practice began, what it could look like to Tennessee fans. And I say, go look at what Ole Miss is doing and just kind of amp it up, you know, maybe just a little bit when it comes to how quick the offense is, because that's what you'll get on the defensive side. So the biggest thing for me with Tennessee is they're going to have to help out the defense as much as possible. And if that means slowing it down, Every once in a while, they're going to have to do that because Tennessee defense does not have that depth to be able to keep up. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Josh Heupel then want to go out and score 50 points against Bowling Green to open the season, okay, you've got to worry about Tennessee's defense 
letting 30 get scored on them. So I'm interested to see the dynamic of how they, 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 how fast they run it compared to what they need from the defensive side of it, which is something they didn't have to worry about at UCF. Let's be real, real honest with each other here. They could go out and throw 55 to 60 points up there and then they're fine, you know, winning 55 to 50 or 55, 53. So it, it's a work in progress. I think Tennessee's offense can be good with the playmakers they have, and especially with the quarterback that just committed. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when I look at it, it's a great segue, Trey. That was my last question I was going to ask. You know, with us talking, uh, it's tough to marry up a warp speed paced offense with a defense that doesn't have bodies. And, and you know, you, you answered a little bit there. Do you think that is an adjustment slowing down a little bit and, and actually a decent amount, to be honest with you? Do you think that's something that Hypel and them will do during the fall? Or do you think it's, hey, this is what we do. This is our identity. We're going to go fast. Let's see how it plays out because it's tough to try and, and talk out of not you, but try and talk out of both sides of your mouth on that when you're short on defense, but we're going to go warp speed on right. offense. Do you think that's something that will happen or that's just a talking point that we're going to continue to hit before the season starts? I think Tennessee's going to go, go, go on offense. Yeah. I, 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 you know, and he's going to let Tim Banks, you know, try to figure out how to do what they need to do on defense. And that's why bodies are so important. I think Tennessee's biggest way that they're going to be able to win on Saturday's next fall against tough opponents is you know, wearing them down, wearing down the opposing defensive line. You know, Cooper Mays and Cade Mays, Tennessee's offensive linemen, they talked about it. They said one of the things they absolutely love with this offense is seeing the defensive linemen bent over, yep. gasping for air. And what Tennessee is going to have to do this year if they're going to stick with some of these opponents is they're just going to have to put their, their, their foot on the pedal and just go. And, yeah. and look, Tim Banks, you've got to – look, you've got a defensive crew, Rodney Garner – and Willie Martinez, you know, and Brian G. Mary, you have experience to know, okay, this is what we need to do to stop the opposing team. This is what we need to, okay, we've seen this type of offense before. Let's see how we managed it in previous seasons. So you've got that experience on defense, and I think that's going to help. Now we just have to figure out a way Tennessee does in the sense of, okay, how do we complement each other without absolutely getting ran out of town on the defensive side? Yeah, that's that. That's the question. That's the million dollar question to me. And uh, Trey, my swan song question here before I let you plug uh, where everybody can find you on social media and, and where they can go to find you at Rocky Top Insider. You have the pulse on the fan base, the Tennessee fans, about as good as anybody, if not better than anybody. Now that we're through spring, how does the Tennessee fan base feel about Josh Heupel? How do they feel about the program? Are you starting to see some some positive momentum coming out of spring with all the negative stuff we had going into it? Tennessee fans are always now going to be in that wait and see approach. Mm -hmm. um, if you ask me that question in August, it might be a different story. Tennessee fans may be like, okay, eight and four, stuff like that. Yeah. But I think Tennessee fans have started to learn how to calm their expectations, but they are excited in this type of offense. They're nervous about the defense, but they're excited to see what this offense can bring, just like a lot of people are. I think Tennessee it's going to have a hard time over the next four months. Look, football is always king. And, 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 and that's the bottom line. There's no way else getting around, it. you know, basketball, I think it's second, whatever, when it comes to most universities, I think with Tennessee and what they're trying to build up with Danny white, you know, involve the athletic director, build that momentum of an experience of getting back to Neyland. They're not just selling the football program. They're selling, hey, come back to Needland and experience this thing again. And if they can get enough people in the boat, even on that side of it, I think that Tennessee fans will start getting even more excited for the 2021 season. The problem lies in, you don't know, and I don't think it'll matter towards the end of the season, but you might be playing for nothing when it comes to a postseason because we don't know what Tennessee is going to do when it comes to self-imposing any kind of violations or any kind of, you know, bans when it comes to the NCAA investigation that is going on. So, you know, t Tennessee fans have tempered their expectations a little bit. I don't blame them. I think it's smart. Um, but look, man, if, again, if you ask me that in August, Tennessee fans are going to be ready to go. Yeah. Nine and three, three, baby. Nine right. and three. Yeah. Got a Nine shot and three. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's so hit and miss right now. And I guess Tennessee fans are just thankful they got a good baseball team.
Hey, yeah, the Vols are really doing good on the diamond. Uh, you know, the SEC in general, you know, outside of a couple teams, it's really just unbelievably it. dominant uh, in baseball. We talk about the dominance of football, but SEC baseball is crazy uh, when it comes to dominating. But Trey Wallace from Rocky Top Insider, it's always fun, man. I always appreciate you coming on. It's great insight. Uh, I know our Tennessee fans, our Tennessee audience, really everybody in general that wants to know. Because here's the thing in the SEC, you know how it is. You got to know how the other teams are doing. You, yeah. you got to the, the uh, everybody's an enemy. And then the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but Trey, where can everybody find you on social media? Where can they find you on Rocky top insider, man? Cause you're pumping out some hits. Thanks bud. You can follow me at Trey Wallace, T R E Y Wallace underscore on Twitter. Follow us every day at Rocky top insider. Uh, just, just pushing out content, man. And, and, and getting out there, a lot of storylines coming out of the spring, heading into the summer, Tennessee announced a, a game in 2028 against West Virginia. <laughs> You know, so they're, they're already looking ahead. So, you know, yeah. we're continuing to bust out the content, man. I appreciate you so much, man. Keep up the great work and thanks for having me, brother. Always, man. Excited to get you back on and talk a little more as the season nears. Appreciate you guys joining us as well. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's not hard. Just hit the subscribe button. That way you can always be alert when we're dropping new content because we always do. It's been another edition of the J-Boy Show with Trey Wallace from Rocky Top Insider and J-Boy's Going Going. Gone. The J-Boy Show is produced by David Cohn, Technical Director Dave Hammock, Creative Director David Culbertson, Audio Engineer Faison Sharif, Production Assistants Blaine Crane and Kyle Orr, Executive Producers Jake Crane, Vince Thompson, Steve Chamberlain, and David Cohn. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, thejboyshow.com, for updates regarding our newest apparel and merch designs. Win the water cooler with The J-Boy Show.